You're watching Contractor Evolution, where we unpack the systems, tactics, and skills you need to take your fast-growing contracting business to the next level. You're here to learn what it takes to scale up, work less, and increase profitability. You've come to the right place. Stay tuned to learn what separates the new breed of contractor from the old school and welcome to your ultimate guide on the business of contracting. In a chess match, a player's first sequence of moves is known as an opening. The opening is a memorized series of 8 to 12 moves that ideally sets up the chess game in a way that is advantageous for the player. Now, there are hundreds of well-known openings in chess. There's King's Pawn opening, Danish Gambit, Sicilian Defense. There's one called Rui Lopez. The list goes on. Um, Each one of these openings has its own desired outcome. Some are uh, really aggressive or, or on the offense. Some are more defensive. Some are strategic in a different way. But an advanced chess player would use different openings depending on what they knew about their opponent and how they like to play. You get the idea, right? You execute the right opening and you create some leverage for yourself within the match. Uh, You execute the wrong opening or you make a mistake during it and you're fighting an uphill battle from there. Now, this isn't a chess podcast, but there is a reason I'm opening with this comparison. And that is because your sales calls have an opening and just like a chess master, you can create a huge advantage for yourself by perfecting them. This is something that I've just learned through through repetitions over the years. I definitely didn't invent this. I'm sure it's being talked about on other podcasts or in books, but I just wanted to share with you um, something from my world that has worked really well for me over the years because I think it will work for you too. Now, when I say master your opening, What I'm talking about specifically here um, are the first few minutes of your sales calls. Now, I've heard different businesses call their sales calls different things. You might call it an estimate. You might call it a quote, a consultation, um, an appointment, a design meeting, a discovery meeting. Um, Generally speaking, we don't call it a sales call because we know our customers don't like to be sold to, or that's what they say. So we, we call it something else, but that is fundamentally what it is. It is a sales call. Um, this is a well-qualified lead that has been set up over the phone into a proper meeting for you. Um, if you're a residential painter or a landscaper or a roofer, um, some other home service provider, this is likely happening at the client's home. If you're a custom home builder um, or a general contractor, this may be taking place in your own office. Sometimes they happen at a restaurant or a coffee shop. Um, or for some of you more techie contractors, this might actually be happening over Zoom now. The setting for what I'm talking about today really doesn't matter. Just imagine whatever your sales calls look like, okay? It is my firmly held belief that the first 10 minutes of any sales call or estimate or appointment, whatever you call it, are the most important. How the first 10 minutes go have huge implications on how likely you are to land the job, how much you'll be able to charge the customer, and even how well your client contractor relationship grows from there. I know what you might be thinking, aren't the last 10 minutes the most important? Aren't the those precious moments when you're closing the most important when pen is being put to paper or when a deposit check is being cut? Um, and you're not wrong. The closing moments are crucial too. And we can talk about that on another episode if you want. But to me, the opening is actually the most important um, because it's what sets up the close. You master your opening and you're basically leaving yourself a one foot putt for birdie every time. Trust me. Okay, so what you're trying to achieve in the first 10 minutes, three things. One, convey likability. Two, you need to establish the leader follower dynamic. And three, you need to do a trial close. I'm gonna unpack all three of these in depth. Let's start with how to convey likability. Most of the psychology that I've read says it takes a matter of seconds for someone to form a first impression of you. I've read some experts um, put that as short as a fraction of a second, like literally a split second they make their first impression. Some say 30 seconds, some say longer. I come down somewhere in the middle, actually on the shorter end, I would say it's about seven to 10 seconds. Um, Humans are designed to form a lot of their opinion about you in a very short period of time. And while don't judge a book by its cover is a a well-used bit of wisdom we're all familiar with, we're actually biologically hardwired 
to do the opposite. So that initial, hi, how are you? And the handshake, it's all super important. So is being on time, by the way. Trust me, people notice when you knock on the door or you arrive exactly when you said you would. So when you initiate this appointment or estimate or quote or whatever you call it, and whether it's at their house or an office or a restaurant or on Zoom, is really important that you have a relaxed smile, good posture, good body language, and a, and a smooth introduction. And by, by that, I mean like a rehearsed opener. So what I say every single time, I've said this thousands and thousands of times, <laughs> mine is, hey, how are you? It's really nice to properly meet you. Uh, I've been looking forward to this. Can I come in? Right, like that's literally all I say every single time. I get, you're gonna get bored of it. You're gonna get tired of hearing your talking points, but that's okay. It's important that it comes off smoothly, confidently. Don't overcomplicate it. Just find something that works for you. Now, from there, you know you're moving, you're moving into their home. You're sitting down at the desk, where whatever the setting is. I usually try to move into a um, like a quick chit chat, and I and I think that a lot of people get this rapport building piece wrong. In my opinion, you don't need to spend 45 minutes painfully asking about a fishing trip because you saw a photo of, you know, this customer holding a marlin on the wall, all in some veiled attempt to get to know the person. If that conversation comes up naturally, great, but if it doesn't, don't force it. The best thing that I've found to just gauge whether or not someone wants to talk with you, wants to BS with you, is I ask a really open-ended question and then I tweak it based on the season. So I'll give you a few examples. Like after I've come in, after I've sit down, right, after that initial handshake, I would say something like this. Hey, so what's going on in your world these days? What are you guys up to for Christmas? That's something I might say in November or December. Hey, what's going on in your world these days? You guys looking forward to being done with winter? might say that in February, March. Hey, what's going on in your world these days? Uh, how's your summer shaping up? Something I'd say in May, June. You, you get the idea. Like you have a go-to opener that you tweak based on the season. And you'll see based on their body language, eye contact, based on the length of response to that question, you're going to be able to tell if your prospect is feeling chatty or not. If they are, if they give you a long-winded answer, if they give you some, you know, they give you some meat on the bone, something to work with, I usually ask some follow-up questions, right? I go a bit deeper, I build some rapport, I use the opportunity that they're giving me. If they're, if I got a chatty Kathy, um, I, I use that open window. If they're not though, it's really important that you don't force it. Get down to business, move to the next step in the process, and another rapport building opportunity will open up later. It's really funny. On so many occasions, you'll get someone that is like actually kind of rude. They seem really short with you at the start. And then later on in your sales process, they'll open up and spend 30 minutes bullshitting with you um, about some totally random point. Like it's, it's weird. These quieter people or people um, who seem like they're not in a talkative mood. It, it often amazes me later on how much they, they open up um, and, and do want to get to know you. So I never force it at the beginning. When I first started doing sales, I got this totally wrong, you guys. I was super junior. I obviously had no idea what I was doing. I'd arrive at, a, at an appointment like 20 minutes early. I'd sit in my truck. I'd listen to techno on full blast to get pumped up. I'd slap myself in the face. I'd like do these bizarre breathing exercises. I would arrive to these appointments in such a jittery state of excitement that it literally weirded people out. Customers were like, who is this guy? Why is he literally vibrating in our living room at 9 a.m. on a Tuesday morning? So take my advice, don't do that. Um, but if you want a somewhat, I don't know, out there pro tip, here is one that has done wonders for me over the years. I always, before I initiate a meeting, I always visualize the outcome that I want. So before I start, I will take a quiet moment to myself and I'll ask, like, what am I trying to do here? I, I literally say it out loud. And I will answer myself in the form of a visualization. So if I want a deposit check by the end of this interaction, I literally close my eyes and visualize someone handwriting a check to me. And I'll do it over and over and over. I'll do it like 10 times, a mental image 10 times. 
um, if I'm looking for a verbal commitment, I literally close my eyes and I, I visualize or I hear in my mind a client saying, hey, everything looks really good. We're ready to move forward. So whatever it is I want out of the meeting I'm about to conduct, I make a, a, a vivid mental picture now, that's a bit hokey for you. Don't worry about it. But I'm telling you, these little mindset tricks have netted me some unbelievable unbelievable results over the years. A final point on conveying likability. While I've given you some ideas here, the actual turn of phrase you employ doesn't really matter that much. What matters is your comfort level and how natural it feels. What matters is that it's you, right? In sales, actually in all of business, broadly speaking, if it feels unnatural to you, it's coming off as unnatural to them. So just figure out the collection of go-to phrases that work for you and stick to them. You're not trying to do that much at the beginning of this interaction. You just want to come across not as a weirdo like I did in the early days. So find that mix of energy and verbiage that makes you and your prospects the most comfortable um, during these all-important first few seconds. Okay, second thing you're trying to do with your opening is establish the leader-follower dynamic. And I got to say, everyone, this is probably the most important thing I'm going to talk about today. Uh, so listen close. A leader-follower dynamic in sales is where you establish command over the meeting. Okay, let me repeat that. You establish command over over the meeting. You're non-verbally communicating that you're running this interaction. This sales call, no matter where it happens, this sales call is your dojo and they are in it. Does that make sense? What you're trying to get across is, I've done this a lot of times, many times before, and I know what I'm doing. Let me take the lead on this. Now, you can't flat out say that, right? You'd sound like a total douche. Listen, I know what I'm doing and I've done this many times, so trust me, don't open up your sales calls like that. It will not go well. Um, but you can communicate that indirectly and I'm gonna show you how. Now, important point here before we dive in, you need to hit this point early. The timing and delivery, it matters a lot. So you need to establish your leader follower command within the first five minutes. Um, of this meeting. If you have someone that is really talkative, you know, you can give yourself, an, you know, some slush minutes, but I would say ten, within 10 minutes, max, no longer than that, um, this has to happen early. If you wait too long to do this or you don't do it at all, what I call a buddy-buddy dynamic sets in. Later on in the process, when you need to be a little bit more assertive, you'll find that that gear simply isn't there for you when you need it because the tone, the vibe, the overall energy of the conversation has, has become too casual. So the timing of this part of your opening matters a lot. And the best way I've found to accomplish this is with a well-scripted and delivered purpose and outcomes. Okay, so purpose and outcomes. You all will need to write and craft and deliver your own unique purpose and outcomes. Um, you guys all run different businesses and different industries of different sizes with different clients. So there is no one size fits all script for this. But having a clear purpose purpose, which is the reason we're getting together today is, and a clear outcomes, which is by the end of this meeting, we will have, or you will have, doing that really well accomplishes what I said a second ago. It indirectly as it communicates that you know what you're doing and it establishes your leader follower dynamic. So here's my go-to, okay? Here's the purpose. Okay, guys, um, Excited to get going with this. Couple really important things I wanna lay out before we dive in. So um, first, I just wanna be super clear about the purpose of this consultation. Probably know this already, but the reason we're getting together today is that I need to gain a way deeper understanding of the scope of this project that you guys were thinking of doing. Obviously, we spoke on the phone a little bit the other day, and, and I know a, a bit about it for sure, but today's our chance to go way deeper into the nitty gritty. I want a ton of detail about your guys' vision for this renovation, um, as well as your specific needs and wants as homeowners and as clients. So I've got a bunch of questions I'm going to ask you and I'll be taking a ton of notes throughout. So that's the purpose, okay? Then I'd move straight. This I'm, I've, I've 
put a break there to just show you how this is different from the outcomes. But when you actually do this, this, this would all flow as one. Here's the outcomes. By the end of this, guys, you'll have a, a written proposal. You'll know exactly how much this is all going to cost, how long it's going to take. We can talk about potential start dates and look at the calendar. Um, you also have a pretty thorough grasp of how our production process actually works. It's really, really important that you understand what's involved with building something like this. Sound good? Yeah, sounds good. That part at the end, by the way, where you say, sounds good? And they consent is really important too. You can't skip that. You want them to give you that little, that small yes, because it's a tacit agreement on their part to follow you through this process. Um, and if you've done estimates, if you've done sales for any period of time, you know those small yeses throughout the process add up to the big yes at the end. Okay, now what you've done here with a solid purpose and outcomes is you've established command in a very polite but assertive way. By doing this, you're saying, I have a process and I'm super confident in it. And this puts them at ease um, in a subtle but important way. The subconscious thought you want your prospect to be having is, okay, this person seems like they've done this before. I think we're in good hands. There's also a, an ever so slight edge to your voice. There's an edge to your tone. Um, and you'll feel it when you do this well. It's like, Hey guys, this is what we're doing today and you're going to like it, okay? Play around with that a little bit. I, if that's a really nuanced point. Practice makes perfect, but that that edge thing is something you'll, you'll develop a feel for over, over time. What you absolutely want to avoid like the plague though is what I call a soft opening. In my opinion, the worst thing you can do as a salesperson is start off a meeting with something like, so what can I help you with today? Or, hey guys, tell me, where do you want to begin? They don't know, right? And by not taking command of the conversation early, you're conveying a certain aimlessness. Remember, you want your prospect to like you, but you're not there trying to make friends. You want them to like you, but you're not trying to make friends. The phrases, the terminology, the actual verbiage you use should be the same or almost the same every single time. My purpose and outcomes is super rehearsed. I emphasize the same words every time the tonality of my voice sort of shifts and moves throughout that little section the same way every time. And while this is a somewhat scripted part of your sales process, if you're doing this well, it shouldn't sound scripted at all. And if it does, practice it while you drive. Throw some ums and ahs in there to make it sound more organic. 90% of sales is delivering a script without it sounding that way. Now, super important note here. The Finer points of what you say to establish the leader follower dynamic are going to be different for all of you based on your industry, based on your sales process, your ideal client profile, uh, your average job size, and a whole host of other things. You can use the example I just went through as a starting point, but definitely tweak it so that it fits you and your process and your business a little bit better. The important thing is that a clear purpose and outcome gets delivered by you and in return, you get that small yes back. Establishing the leader follower dynamic happens in a matter of minutes, but I'm telling you the power position that it gives you throughout the rest of the sales process is extremely noticeable and you will see it in both your closing ratio and your average charge rate. They'll both go up. Third thing that every great opening needs is a trial close. Now to explain what trial closing is and where it fits into your opening, it's probably easiest to start with the actual problem that it solves. So a lot of contractors or salespeople uh, struggle with closing or asking for the job at the end of their estimates, at the end of their appointment, right? The proposal is on the table, the price has been unveiled, the details have been unpacked, this is deal making or deal breaking time. There's, there's a moment here where often the customer or the potential customer, all they need is a little nudge to get over the finish line and contractors shy away from that. They get nervous. They don't do it. They sometimes backpedal. They'll say, well, it's okay. You can think about it. Like there, there's, a, there's a, a moment here to step up to the plate and a lot of people don't. And this is a shame, right? Because we've, we've tracked this both in our business and in the businesses of our clients. And by simply asking for the job, you get a 15% boost in sales ratio. So in other words, 
if you're currently closing at 30% and you start asking for the job properly, it will go to 45% literally overnight. I've seen this so many, so many times. I actually think that's a conservative estimate. I'd put it at, at, at higher. Um, so if this, this is the question, right? If this simple step moves the needle so much, why doesn't everyone do it? It's because they feel uncomfortable, right? When I dig into this with the entrepreneurs that we work with, I usually hear stuff like, well, I don't want to put our customers on the spot, right? Um, or I, I just don't want to come across as too salesy. I hate high pressure salespeople. No, no, that, that's off brand for us. Just as an aside, I think this is kind of interesting. Um, our Canadian contractors seem to find this an especially difficult mental block. Our American friends, and we have a lot of them, they don't seem to struggle with this as much. Our, our Canadian clients have uh, a harder time closing. Americans are a little bit more direct. Selling is a little bit more normalized, a little bit less shamed. So I just think that's an interesting, an interesting piece. But in any case, from my perspective, the main reason contractors feel uncomfortable closing is because they haven't primed the, the prospect. They haven't primed the potential customer with this idea early enough. They haven't framed the appointment in the right way. Um, simply put, the expectation has not been set with this potential customer that there will be an opportunity to do business together, right? And so when it comes time to close the deal, it does feel unnatural. It feels super salesy. Um, it does feel kind of out of the blue and trial closing solves this. In its simplest form, uh, a trial close is a gentle prod that you give to the prospect. It's a nudge early on in the sales process that reminds them you are there to do business, right? They need to know that. They need to know that you are hoping to make a transaction happen. Um, and as with most things in sale, there's a totally douchey way to do this and there's a cool way. There are a whole bunch of places where you could do a trial close. You can do one at the end of a setup call. You can do one during your opening, like we're talking about today. Uh, a lot of people do these before they go and do their takeoff. Now, I've had the most success doing one of these at the end of my setup call. Side note, by the way, if you have an office manager, sales coordinator, secretary, someone besides yourself doing your setup calls for you, someone setting up your appointments for you, you can very easily train them on how to do these. But I would do one at the end of my setup call, and then I would do another one during my opening right after my purpose and outcomes, like we talked about a minute ago. Small caveat here, if you're a custom home builder, you're a general contractor, uh, you're a renovator, remodeler, uh, you're a, like a construction or a landscape construction company, you do large projects, you're, if you're a business that frequently does jobs that are over $50,000, your sales process won't work in a one or two call close. It's Your sales process is more of a courtship. It's more of a dating ritual. You may be selling for, for months, sometimes even years. Um, so for a lot of you contractors that are doing large average job size stuff, you need to find a place within your sales process, probably closer to the end of it, to insert your trial closes. Here's what it would sound like uh, during the tail end of my setup call if I was setting up an appointment for myself. And again, you can train someone else to do this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this example as if I was setting up the appointment for myself. Okay, so guys, on Saturday, um, when I come by, I should be able to put together a detailed proposal with a price and a timeline that we'll go through together. We'll hash everything out in depth. Um, it's important, you know, okay, we do book out a few months in advance. So a lot of our customers put down a deposit and secure a spot right away. Like if the price makes sense for you guys, the timeline works, we can book you guys into our production planner the day of the estimate. Okay. Okay. That little, that tonality thing at the end, you're, they're going to say yes. or They're going to say, no, we need to think about it. And that's fine too. And again, during my opening, right after my purpose and outcomes, okay, like we talked about a minute ago, I would say again, okay, guys, by the end of our appointment today, I should have a detailed proposal with a price and a timeline. We'll go through all of it together. We'll do some Q&A. I want to make sure you guys come into this whole experience, eyes wide open. You feel super comfortable with everything. Um, but if you are happy with the price, you're happy with the details of the proposal, we can get you guys booked into the second half of May with a small deposit. Sound good? Now, you're probably thinking, 
what if they say no? What if when you say, sound good? They say, no, that doesn't sound good. It's like, it's easy. It's easy. You say, no problem. You can think about it too if you need to, right? This is a nudge. This is a reminder. This is not the close. This is just a little, a little prod in that direction. Now, why is this so important to do early? Because later on, when the proposal is on the table, the details are all out there. The price is you know, wide open for them to see. They're kind of looking at each other. They're thinking about it, right? All you have to say a lot of the time is, listen, we'd really love to do this work for you. Do you guys feel comfortable moving forward? Like those two sentences are going to net you 15% more deals uh, over the course of a year. But if there's this tiny little voice in the back of your mind going, well, I don't want to put them on the spot or I don't want to come across as salesy or that would, that would sound totally out of the blue. You won't do it. You won't step up to the plate and you would not believe how much revenue you're letting slip through your fingertips every year by shying away from these moments. So trial closing by doing these little reminders, by doing these little nudges, it makes, it makes the actual close 10 times easier because you've set up the appointment with the right context, with the right understanding so that it's not out of the blue. And that, that's what I mean when I say you're leaving yourself a two foot putt for birdie. So that's how I do my openings, guys. Three really important things. You need to convey likability in those first few seconds. You need to establish the leader follower dynamic. And you also need to do a clear and concise trial close. Now, a few thoughts from me as we close this episode. Most of you are constantly hunting improvements and efficiency within your businesses. And just a little piece of advice to wrap this up. The best place to start your search is with tasks, processes, jobs, procedures that get done repeatedly over and over and over and over again. If you look closely, there are often really little things within that process that when improved, accumulate through repetition and make an enormous aggregate difference. Think about it. Your business is going to do God knows how many estimates this year. Implement what I talked about today. Become methodical about your openings and let me know how it goes. I have a feeling you'll be pleasantly surprised. All right, that's it for today, guys. We'll see you next week. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Contractor Evolution. If you've already subscribed to our channel, consider sharing this episode with another contractor who you think needs to hear it.